What's up, guys? Crowman17. I'm Crowman. I got a special guest, Keith. How from, you doing? I think you uh, remember him. The guy who was beaten down in the street, unfortunately, the day I was kicked by Yvette Falarka. So, uh, we're just going to spend a quick 12 minutes talking about what happened yesterday and uh, everything we experienced and um, uh, how it went. It was actually not too bad. It was a really small group. I think you actually showed up later. Oh, no, actually, you were, you were there. Um, yeah, I was there um, about a half an hour early at the university just to check it out and see if there's anyone hanging around looking to cause trouble, but I didn't see anybody at the university. Yeah, no, we kept hearing about, like, oh, uh, they posted this, they know where we're at, they posted that, they know where we're going, but we actually didn't run into any trouble yesterday. It wasn't until we, we did actually go to the bookstore, which I was surprised to see. I didn't realize that there was a... a a freaking communist bookstore that was totally pushing communism. Oh, yeah. Posters in the window and, um, you know, big red stars and pictures of Lenin and, like, really? They meet. Antifa meet there to have strategy meetings, like, right before an event. Like, right before, I think, April 15th, they met there. Right before the April 27th, they met there. Really? It was, like, a regular meeting place. So they meet, like, a couple hours before an event to talk about it and then go out and do their do their stuff didn't, didn't realize that but, um, yeah okay so now we know uh, a hot spot where they hang out and where they corral just before raising havoc I guess yeah yeah um, I think it's interesting to note that um, that old guy who showed up while we were walking around earlier in the day and you've, I'm sure you've seen him. He's got like long white hair, a long beard. He yeah. usually wears a green hat and scouts for Antifa. He's, he was at April 15th, right? He was at the March 4th one. Really? I think he was at the February 1st one with the Milo. So he was there? Oh, yeah. He was at the uh, April 27th one. And he was probably there in August. I don't remember seeing him, but he's always there. And he was there taking our pictures, texting stuff. Hmm. He's always stirring up trouble. Wow. Yeah, I, I try to keep an eye out for a lot of these people, but, you know, you never really know who is who, is who because everybody, pretty much, we all look like, you know, just regular citizens. It's, yeah. it's really hard to tell. And both groups, our group is a little more mixed than their, their group, but both groups are actually pretty mixed. What I saw, what they, okay, they actually built a wall. They keep, they're making a big habit of doing that. They built a wall of people to keep us from getting into the bookstores because we couldn't go so we couldn't go in there and see what was going on one guy tried to get in there and um they i guess forcefully kept him from coming in what he said that they assaulted him like slammed him from getting in i heard about that so he called the police the police did show up like over an hour after he called and he explained to them what happened but they they said that you know there was no crime committed I understand on one hand they can decide who can and can't come into the building, but how far can they go, especially in Berkeley of all places, to keep somebody from coming in? Right. Can't, are they allowed to assault somebody from to keep them from coming in? I guess it's a murky legal area or something. I don't know. That's what it sounds like because they didn't they didn't do anything for him. The cops were there for a while and they didn't do anything for him. They eventually they said, oh well, for we well, we've. Well, from everything we've gathered, there's been no crime committed. So eventually they just left. So I guess the, the uh, what is it, we retain the right to refuse service to anyone. I guess that covers, I guess they have the right to physically remove someone or prevent, I don't know. To remove someone or prevent them from an entering it. Seems like they're stretching the law a little bit, but who knows. Yeah, I, I think in the end they just don't really want... Uh, I don't know, more than they have to deal with, I guess. The bookstore was a very weird place, though. So. Yeah, I've been to a couple events there, and before they really knew me, I went to some events there, and um, now they all recognize me and call me out, but... Uh, yeah, I... Yeah, I think that's been there forever. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was something else. Uh, it wasn't nearly as... We were actually told not to go, believe it or not. A lot of people kept saying, just don't go, don't go, don't go. But in the end, it was just nothing else to do. So we went. 
Um, Amber didn't want to leave. She didn't have any... She, she believed, and I, I think she was right. They come, they protest our stuff. Why can't we protest their stuff? I think that's fair. I mean, I don't want to be seen as the instigators at all, but we don't... Uh, like, they, they go, and they're claiming to be protesting when they actually show fucking clubs and bats yeah. and knives and mace and sh all kinds of stuff, and that's their protest. But we go to protest... We're obviously okay. We're not looking for vi fights. We're not looking for violence. And I know that they they can they can just say that we are, because we know that they get violent. Yeah. And and if we know that they get violent and we show up, then they could just say, well, we, well obviously you knew what you were in for. But uh, there wasn't any violence. They actually the people that they had blo blocking us from getting into the store were old people. They looked like they were uh, like I don't know in their sixties and up seventies, <laughs> pretty old. Probably the owner and his wife. I would imagine, or I don't know if it's the wife, but the one lady used to have, like, short, it wasn't blue a couple months ago, I don't know if it's blue still, but um, she's always there. Did but, you see her? Um, and I was late, so I didn't see, um, I didn't see what happened there, but back um, on August 26th in San Francisco, I marched with them through the mission, and she recognized me and called me out, and she had blue hair then, but... Huh. I always see her at that store, so either she, I don't know if she's the owner's wife or whatever, a co-owner, I don't know. But. Interesting, she recognizes you, huh? Yeah. Well, um, we actually spent some time at a bar, mostly, and from what I heard, someone was outside and they saw somebody with a cell phone and they were <laughs> giving our location. We, we kind of half expected somebody to come to the bar. Nobody showed up at the bar, fortunately. I would have gotten more better footage of Antifa uh, crashing another party, a bar party. But, you know, that, that didn't happen. And, you know, like I said, there was really not much happening. Nothing happened at, uh, nothing happened at the bookstore. Nothing happened at the bar. Their group was small. Our group was small. We didn't see any Antifa. They were wearing communist stars. Oh, right when we showed up is when it, when it happened. The guy, the guy tried to come in. Right when we were coming in, they were, like, forcing him out. And then as soon as we showed up, we saw them just, they closed the curtains. It's like we couldn't see what was going on inside. I, ha I cannot help but say it again and again. If your message is so important, why are you being so secretive about it? You should be open about it. Everyone should be embra embracing this idea if it's so wonderful, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I don't know. What you know, on my way to that bar, like, three people just started calling me a Nazi. Just out of the blue. I don't know why, but... Jeez, wow, everyone recognizes you. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and also, I guess MLK Park has been closed off for renovation until next year, until January. So they have... If you go by um, the park in um, in Berkeley, you're going to find that the whole thing is just completely fenced off. Um, probably something to do with, you know, what's what's been coming up and what's been happening, and they just want to make sure that... This, that's basically ground zero of MLK Park. Yeah, there's been so much going on there, I... I don't know. I didn't know that it needed Quarantine. four months of... I think the sign said from October 16th. Yeah, you went by there. So yeah, to December 30th. It's closed for renovations, but I didn't think that it needed that much renovation. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if nothing happens. Like, we go back there in a few months and there's no, there's been no changes to the park at all. And they're actually just closing it off to keep... To keep uh, people from gathering. Keep, from, keep people from gathering, yeah. yeah. Probably. Uh, um, so where'd you come down from? You said you came down from Oregon, huh? I came down from Oregon, yeah. Wow. I, uh, friends brought me up after the attack, and after I was well enough, then I went to, uh, Florida to cover Hurricane Irma relief, then I went to Puerto Rico to cover that, so then I've been back about a week, and then came down here. So you basically try to cover all events, kind of like me, huh? As much as I can, yeah. It's, it's not it's, easy, but... You don't, really like, just pound this, the, your channel with with politics right? uh, more than I want but I mean, it's just kind of worked out that way I just kind of happened it's, to start back in February with the Milo yeah. thing it's but what it's hits. that's what kicked it all off for me and then I just cover it happens to be a lot of politics because that's what's in the Bay Area and I was living in the Bay Area and so that's kind of how it works out so but. did you just move this year no I've been in the Bay Area for quite a while since 1990 actually but I didn't really get active politically till like towards the end of the year, like around last October. And then I started getting into journalism uh, with the Milo thing and found out I really like doing this. 
Yeah, same here. That's pretty close, actually. I, except I didn't go to the Milo event. I only heard about it on the TV. I actually came home, went to my neighbor's house. They had it on the television, and and I was like, whoa, what's what's all this? I didn't even know Milo was going to be speaking in Berkeley. Otherwise, I probably would have tried to go. But, um, yeah, I saw the fires. I saw the people in mass. I had no idea who Antifa was. I had no yeah. idea who BAM was, Black Block. I had yeah. never heard of any of that. And I just looked at him like, are they're doing all of this because because they don't lie? And I've been following Milo Yiannopoulos for a while. When I first got into him, even my dad was like, oh, uh, he made judgments. He's like, oh, you know, he's controversial. I'm like, you don't even know who he is yet. And then after, like, months later down the road, my dad got to know who Milo Yiannopoulos was. And it was like, wow, this guy's like, pretty sharp. Yeah, I had, I had no idea what to expect. I found out online that Antifa were going to be there. I didn't know who they were. I found out where they were going to be there, so I just showed up with my cameras, and I was pretty surprised by the crowd, and then they had started early, so already there was, like, smoke from, I don't know what, fireworks and stuff, and when I walked up, they were shooting these fireworks under the second floor balcony of the um, student union at the cops that were all lined up up there. Really? And I was like, wow, this is... Berkeley. This is going on in Berkeley right now. I couldn't believe that. It was that unbelievable. They, I couldn't believe they were letting them do this. Well, that's the other thing. It I just didn't believe. seem normal. Yeah, and then you know, a couple times, I guess the police had enough, and so then they would march right up to the edge of the balcony, and they, I don't know if they were shooting pepper balls or some people said rubber bullets. I don't know, but they put their guns over the balcony. And people would start to just split, and you'd hear a pop, 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 mm -hmm. and then they would go back, and then the crowd would go back, and they'd start shooting more of those little those. They did the long tubes, and they were shooting, I don't know if they were bottle rockets, I don't know what they were, but they would shoot them up over the balcony thing, and they'd, they'd explode, and, or someone would hit, bounce back, and explode on the ground in front of us. And the cops would have enough, and they'd come over the balcony, pop, pop, pop. Wow, just so, back and forth like that, huh? Yeah, it was really weird, but they really never made a concerted effort to clear the crowd, and soon after, That's what it, looked it was like. really early, they announced that Milo had left the building, but I don't think anyone really believed it. I think everybody thought that it was just a tactic to get people to clear. So no one moved. And they announced that you're going to be in violation of law. If you don't leave now, this is your whatever order to leave. You'll be arrested. Like, nobody budged. And the police didn't care and didn't do anything about it either. Wow. Yeah, it was uh, kind of terrifying, actually. And I think that was the point. It was you know, terrorism. Yeah. yeah. But seeing that was what prompted me to go to the March for Trump in Berkeley the, for the yeah. next event. And okay. I, I honestly felt like they keep, they, after after um, Trump was inaugurated, the day he was inaugurated, this, this these you know, people just kept, kept rioting. They kept having their gatherings, but they weren't, of course, not really gatherings. They were riots. Yeah. And I was just like, well, how come we're not doing anything anymore? How come we're not getting together anymore? Like when we did, um, you know, how come Trump's not doing you know, rallies or at least can we do something, you know, just to show that we still support him or whatever? Something, you know, show something to, to counterbalance this because otherwise these people are just going to keep coming out and destroying shit. Yeah. And I remember when I first started seeing the notifications that there was going to be an event in Berkeley on March 4th, I was... I, I knew exactly what a lot of people were thinking, and a lot of people were thinking, like, Berkeley? Are you kidding me? No thanks. Um, a lot of people posted that on the Facebook page. Like, I'm like, I'm just too afraid to go to Berkeley. It's too too crazy, too hectic. It's going to get out of control. Look what happened at the Amilo event. And a lot of people, like Bay Stick Man and other people, knew about knew that, and they came prepared and ready, expecting violence. And whoa wow that was something else yeah i got there like at nine o'clock in the morning and um went over to where antifa were and talked to a vet for a little while and yeah um, yeah vet Falarca. Really? and i was trying to get her to say what she was willing to do if she was willing to perpetrate violence on people um who she didn't agree with and she was really caging would admit it and then one of her lieutenants or whatever you call it who's always there with her came up to me and said well if someone's trying to stab you with a knife wouldn't you defend yourself and I said well, of course but what if no one's stabbing you or trying to stab you what if they're just talking and then another guy came up with the same line same line all these Antifa like they were all listening to the same lecture and, and memorized the same rhetoric but she wouldn't come out and spell out what or say what she was going to do what she was willing to do unlike the last time I had contact with her she was very clear about crazy stuff that she was going to do. Like, like what? 
Well, basically, she just said that um, because we're Nazis, we did the first strike. So anything that she does is completely justified, and it's not a crime in attacking us. And she just screamed that at my camera just she's, over and over. It's crazy. She decides that we're Nazis, and that's the first strike. Yeah. It's all it's all them. It's all about them, them, them. Me, 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 me. Wow. Spoiled people. That is fucking crazy. That kind of pisses me off. But. Yeah. The thing that really pissed me off is when I got attacked, I wasn't so mad at them because I expect that from them. But what really pissed me off is like the mainstream media, Nancy Pelosi, she got all the regular citizens of Berkeley so worked up that not only were BAM, refused fascism, and Revcom there, but their regular people were there Nazi hunting and going around and screaming at people that were there that they figured they must be Nazis because the media told them they were. And they were all whipped up into a frenzy. It's like, Jeez. it's crazy. It's just <laughs> it's insanity. And the mainstream media should take responsibility for their part in creating some of the violence of that day and the previous Right, I've been days. feeling that way forever. Like, the media is doing a lot of this. They're feeding into this. They're they're just splashing fuel on the fire with a lot of the stuff they say. They're, they're not helping. They're trying to keep people... Divided. Divided, yeah. yeah. That's exactly it. And I just, I really wish that they could be held responsible, held responsible for a lot of the things that they say. Uh, I know... <laughs> I know it's, it's, it sounds kind of hypocritical, but God, I mean, when, when, it's hard to explain, I don't know, it just feels like they're pushing, 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 and you can't push back, it's just not fair, and people are bleeding in the streets because of it, it's like, how far is it going to go? Well, if you push back online, you get censored, you exactly. get censored by this Twitter is the best or, or we can Google, do. YouTube, yeah. Everything, take on your Facebook posts, whatever it is. Yeah. It just it's it it's gotten it's gotten to a level where it's it really is just sick. It's yeah, you know we don't take my word for it. What do you think? On the you know, on the on the political front, you know it's great getting Trump in office, but we've been losing the cultural war for like fifty years, and mm -hmm. we're paying the price for that, and we're bleeding on the streets because we're losing the cultural war. That's all we really want. I just want to keep our culture. You know, we just we, that doesn't make us Nazis. But if we can't. There's no convincing. I know. There's no convincing anybody on the other side that that's, that doesn't make us Nazis. We're, we just want to keep our culture. You know, we just want to keep America. If America was such Nazis, and how come we didn't join the Nazis during World War Two? How come we didn't side with them? Yeah. You know, how come we weren't fighting alongside Nazis? Didn't happen. We're not Nazis. America's not for that. And and we know, the government knew, everybody knew, whether you wanted, whether you actually were a Nazi or you weren't a Nazi, <laughs> you knew American people were not going to back Nazis. And we still don't, and we still will not. It's yeah. not going to happen. It's just, we just want to keep our American culture. That's all we want. Why is that so hard? Why is yeah. that so forbidden? I, I, again, I don't think it would be so difficult for American people if it wasn't for the mainstream leftist media and them jumping on the bandwagon and convincing everybody that, you know, they used to call if you voted for Trump or supported Trump, maybe you were alt-right or something, then it got to, uh, maybe you're white nationalist, or now it's like you're just a full-blown Nazi or neo-Nazi if you support mm -hmm. Trump. And the mainstream media just puts that out there all the time. And so I think people are convinced that there's such a, there's a huge segment, a bigger segment of society that are neo-Nazis than, than really are, it's, but you know, it, again, it's hard to tell how many. It, you know. Honestly, I've, I've never met a Nazi. I've never met a white supremacist. When I was in middle school, I met one kid who bragged to me about, and he was a kid, right? He, did, he really couldn't have been too deep into this, but he bragged to me about how he got in trouble for riding a swastika on a window. And to him, with the way he described it, he said, well, all that means to me is that white's is the superior race. I'm like, Okay, I, it really, I think he just got, like, I don't know, it got, like, in-school suspension or something for it. It really even was in even then, it wasn't that big of a deal. He was actually more in, in trouble for kind of vandalizing a brand new building yeah. more than he was for, for writing a swastika. That was the closest, I, the most I've ever met anybody who was, in a way, I guess, a white supremacist or a Nazi. And like I said, he was, in, he was only like four or five years older than I was, and I was in middle school. So just how 
real with it could he have actually been. It's not like he had tattoos or anything. He wasn't. Other than that, I've never, ever actually met a, 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 a neo-Nazi, a Nazi white supremacist or whatever. Did you see that Paul Joseph Watson video where he was um, countering some leftist woman who was saying that the far right is, she's more afraid of the far right and they're far more deadly or scary than like even the radical left or even radical Islam. And so he went through like five pages of attacks from the radical left and there was like one from someone on the right. Yet she was sticking to it's the far right that are the problem. They're the problem. They're the, the danger. And then of course that video it gets demonetized, it gets age restricted, it gets, I think it's called shadow boxing, where you can't see if they remove the views, they remove the comments. Holy crap. So it's like, even if people are looking at it, you don't know because that stuff won't show up anymore. It's like they do everything except remove it because that would cause an outcry. So that would make people think they're restricting free speech. So, okay, you can have your free speech, just no one can ever find it or know it's there. Yeah. Because he disagreed with some crazy thing that some leftist said, which is completely unsubstantiated. Yeah, I, I hate to say this, but, you know, if, if an, an entire network has gone completely one-sided and is censoring all other views on the other side, and I think we all know that it's YouTube, uh, and obviously a lot of people are pretty pissed off about that. I'm, I think, I'm not sure if you saw the video, the, the CEO of YouTube started her own YouTube channel, and um, I think she got like 6,000 likes and something like 30,000 dislikes on her first video. Really? I didn't know that. No. Yeah. And somebody somebody even made a, um, left a comment, a video I saw, somebody left a comment saying, um, how ironic would it be if the female feminist CEO of YouTube was responsible for s sending it into the ground? And uh, at first, I just wanted, I just want to get off the platform and I am. But at the same time, I'm starting to think, you know, she really could run the company into the ground, and that really could look pretty bad, uh, especially for her her view. I mean, if her view is very superior and and righteous, it should be uh, positively influencing the network to uh, YouTube, and yeah. it's not, yeah. horribly not. So um, if you're just uh, tuning in right now, uh, I'm. Crowman and you're watching Crowman 17, you're actually going to find a lot of this not on YouTube anymore. You're going to find a lot of it on uh, Vidme. This will be uploaded to Vidme and this will also be uploaded to Minds.com. Keith, what was your... Um, Patriot Warrior Media, but you have to go, when you go to um, YouTube, you have to go to at K-P-I-K-K-L-E-F-I-E-L-D. And then you'll find my channel. I'm also on Instagram, on Twitter. I do a lot of stuff on Twitter. My DMs are always open, so anybody can contact me. I'll respond. Um, I'm also on Reddit under the New Right and on Discord as well, but not as active on those. But yeah, yeah, he's got a quite a number of stories to tell. This guy has been getting around and saying a lot. I wish you know we had uh, enough time. We could fit it all into one great big video, but we pretty much just focus. We've just focused on what happened yesterday recently. So. Do get a hold of him and check out his channel and see what uh, other stuff that he's done. And check out Crowman. <laughs> check out Crowman and yes, also have an Instagram. It's the only thing that's different than all my stuff. This is Crowman underscore seventeen. Everything else is Crowman seventeen. Um, so we're gonna wrap this up though. But it's been a pleasure having you on. Sir. Yeah, thank you. Glad to be here. Yes, and we uh, hope you have a great trip and a safe trip back up to Oregon. So thanks. Thanks for joining me. Yeah. All right. That was good.